This is the Humane AI pin. It's been blowing up the internet over the last few months with the combined intelligence of sophisticated AI plus the entire internet, all being brought to you in a way that you can still be completely present in a moment and not bogged down by the hassle of working around intrusive, addictive phone applications. And I just went hands on with it. I spent about four hours using it and talking to the CEO, Imran, and I don't think I've ever wanted to love a piece of technology so much and yet still be unable to. Who's Mr. Who's the Boss from YouTube? Finding YouTube video. Arun Maini, also known as Marwazithi Bose, is a popular YouTuber with a focus on technology, <laughs> making that. him 20 yeah. years old. So here's how it works. It clips onto your clothing. It stays there on standby most of the time. And then only when you decide that you want to engage with it, do you place your finger on this touchpad and you speak. For example, when do you think humans will settle on the moon? Humans are expected to return to the moon in 2024 and have the first families on the moon by 2084. Okay, so that's pretty cool, I guess. It can do music in quite an intelligent way. Could you play me some of Mozart's biggest hits? And then this is volume. Sorry, Pat, yeah. But those are still basic requests. The benefit of this being an AI-powered assistant is that you can also do things like look at this food and tell me what it is. It's a white cardboard box with a clear plastic lid. The box contains fried chicken nuggets. Do you want to see the coolest party trick of the century, though? Well, bring your hand in front, the baked in camera will see that hand, and a laser projector housed inside the pin will fire out your display onto it. So this is my home menu. The way the controls work, it's rotate your hands to select something. So if I hover over my home widgets, for example, and then pinch, which is to click, I can cycle between them. The pin also has a depth sensor. So as I move my hand back, it knows that, and it can show you a contextual, quite literally behind the scenes menu based on what you're doing right now. So if I've just taken a photo, for example, and I wanna preview that photo, raise your hand, you'll see the photo, push the hand back and it will give you the menu that lets you pick what you want to do with that photo, like share or delete it. And then as soon as you're done with something, you either clench to go back home or you just put your hand down. The pin will know and it will stop the projection almost immediately. So, is it good? Well, I'm really sorry to say this because Imran, the CEO, he was so nice in person and he was a great host to us, but no, I don't think so. This is a really interesting category and I have ideas for how this could be something that is pretty great, but as of right now, the Humane pin is an incredibly poor proposition. Just before I get into that though, I do want to give credit where credit's due. There are a few things about this that are spot on and they do make you realize the potential. For starters, I think they have absolutely nailed the hardware. So long as you decide that you're okay with wearing a chest pin, then you probably won't find a better one. It's way smaller and lighter than I was expecting, and it's got three different kinds of backings, which go on the inside of your clothing and magnetically attach. One is a super lightweight latch for delicate clothing, so it doesn't tug much. One is the standard battery booster, which is a bit thicker and also wirelessly charges the Humane Pin's internal battery. And then you have the most bulky, which is the clip that can manually fasten around your clothing. And I've got to say, my entire first impressions with this thing before I turned the thing on were great. The construction feels top notch with every pin being carved out of a solid block of aluminium and the charging case has a really sturdy hinge with no sign of flexing. I think it looks pretty. It doesn't have any big garish logos. It's quite sleek and futuristic. And this trust light that indicates what it's doing at any moment for you and also I guess for other people around you is super seamlessly integrated. The magnets are really strong. I even tried running around with it. I mean, yeah, it does flop around a bit if you're wearing a loose t-shirt, but I was not at all worried that it was gonna fall. And and here's the final touch that I do think is quite smart. The base of the pin is one continuous touchpad. So while you don't have a traditional smartphone screen, you do have some of that physical touch experience that you've built up all that muscle memory for. So you can use this, for example, to swipe up and increase your volume, or double tap to take a photo, or hold down with two fingers to enter interpreter mode, which I'll get to in a bit. But the best part of it is it means there are no wake words. You're not having to start each interaction with, hey, humane, and that's really, really great. And there were moments with it where I saw what it could be. I asked it, what's this tree in front of me? And it told me, it's a Japanese maple. And there was something incredibly uniquely satisfying about gaining that insight without needing to be interrupted from the moment with my phone. It felt like a cheat code because let's face it, as soon as your phone gets involved, that becomes your attention. Anytime you take a photo on your phone, you are entirely focused on getting the framing just right. Anytime you want to look something up, you're actually looking down at your hand instead of experiencing. 
Or another example was the one time that we used the interpreter translation feature and it actually worked well. Namaste, Imran. Aapke milke bohat khushi hoy. Hello, Imran. It is a pleasure to meet you. The point is, I see it. I see the vision. And I see small twinges of something magical. But when you actually boil it down to the practicality of using this and wearing this every single day, I can't see a single angle from which it makes sense. I mean, the first thing is the price. This is a $700 gadget. And $700 as a one-off is maybe just about digestible. And you do get everything you need to use it. They also throw in two of the battery boosters in the box, which between them is enough battery for a full day of use. But here's the problem. Very little of the AI processing is being done on the device. So it needs an internet connection. And so because it needs an internet connection, it's not just that it basically does nothing when you're out in the middle of nowhere, but also it needs its own entirely separate data plan. So it's a $700 pin plus a $24 a month subscription on top of that, plus taxes and fees. And yeah, that $24 does also include unlimited AI requests on top of that data, but $24 a month is I mean, that's two times what I'm paying for my phone contract. If you want to go abroad and carry on using the pin, which is a big part of its appeal because of this whole translation feature, there's an extra fee on top of that. And the worst part of it, because I specifically asked about this, the minute that you stop paying that monthly fee, the device stops functioning. So let's say that I use this for two years, where I've paid $700 for the device, $600 for the subscription, $200 in extra taxes, another $100 for roaming fees, and just to finish it all off, another $100 for the clip and the latch, as they don't come with it. Even after $1,700 of investment into this product, as soon as I stop paying my subscription, because, I mean, would you plan to pay it for the rest of your life? Probably not. But at that point, Humane is basically saying that your pin becomes a paperweight. So. Fine, it's very expensive, but if its capability matches that, then maybe it's justifiable. Well, what Imran, the founder, was saying to me is that the pin has the ability to run not just one, but many of the top current AI models. So like GPT-4, for example, which is a very powerful AI that does usually require its own paid subscription for you to use, it has that on the go all the time, which is definitely not to be sniffed at. So one of the things that he was saying he used it for is when he's driving. His phone will be in his pocket, his focus will be on the road, but he has access to the entire internet of knowledge. So he'll just decide, I want to learn something about sleep habits today, for example. And this pin can bring that knowledge in, summarize it, and speak it to you. And this is actually the first moment where I thought, oh, that's interesting. When Drisha, my fiance, does any kind of long drive, she often spends a good half an hour beforehand trying to find a good podcast to listen to during it. And even then, they'll often veer off topic or not be exactly what she was hoping for. But this, the world's information curated exactly based on what you're asking to hear in any given moment, well, that could solve it. Plus, the AI pin does understand the flow of a conversation. This isn't like old school Siri, where you're just reintroducing the topic every single time you bark a new command at it. <laughs> you can talk in a very human, conversational way, and it talks back. So my head started spinning with the possibilities, this idea of a personal teacher wherever you want them. But then I tried it. Hey, I'm really struggling with sleep recently. Uh, I'm only getting five hours and I keep waking up in the night. What should I try and do? Analyzing sleep advice. To improve sleep quality, you can try the following. Be consistent with your sleep schedule. Ensure your bedroom is quiet, dark, and at a comfortable temperature. Remove electronic devices from the bedroom. Avoid large meals, caffeine, and alcohol before bedtime. What I think it lacks is that conversational tone that makes it easy to understand and follow. You know when you're listening yeah. to a podcast and it's a human speaking with human intonation? Yeah. The fact that it doesn't have that makes it hard for me. Yeah, so we're working on some of that at the moment where the conversational piece, we're looking at um, opening up the microphone for um, follow-on questions like that. Yeah, so the bubble burst pretty quickly. Not only is it much harder to understand than a real person, the AI doesn't have that natural intonation, and it's only without that that you realize how important that it is. But it also just takes ages. And this was not a one-off. Everything on the pin seems to take time. Call Aaron. Oh, there you go. 
It's only having experienced that myself that I realize why in the company's promotional material, they're filling in all the silences by talking. Make it sound like Gen Z. And what's cool is you can make it more formal or casual or even do fun things. Because if they didn't fill in those silences, it would be awkward as hell. Now, it's tough to say at this point why everything takes so long. Like even simple things like sending a text or a call, those should be instant offline responses, but they're far from it. So either this is just a really slow device or the voice processing itself also needs to be done online, or this is just the device checking in online each time you ask it something just to make sure that you're still paying the monthly fee. Whatever the reason, it is a big source of friction. Could you give me a synonym for the word great? And a sub to the channel would be, for the word great include fantastic, marvelous, talented, tremendous, and wonderful. We'll go for marvelous. <laughs> if human intonation and speed were the only issues though, I'd be pretty happy to give AI pin the benefit of the doubt because longer term, those are fixable things. But I think the real problem with this product, it, it runs much deeper than that. For starters, it hallucinates, which has become this term to describe how AI can present false information as if it's a fact. So for example, one of the advertised features is you hold a food in front of you and it tells you what is in it, like how much sugar or how many grams of protein. But see, when I asked it how many chicken nuggets there are in a 20 chicken nugget share box, it said without a hint of caution. The box contains fried chicken nuggets. There are 14 chicken nuggets in the box. Interesting. <laughs> well, I think it's because it can only see 14. Yeah. So how on earth will you ever be able to trust a device's nutritional recommendations if it doesn't even know how much of that food there is? I mean, I talked to Imran about this and he said, well, it's not a medical device and the feature is kind of in beta and that's all fair enough. But then what it is, is an advertised feature. Either it needs to get much, much better very quickly, which I don't think is gonna happen because of the natural limitations of what this thing can see, or it needs to make you more aware of its limitations so that you know you shouldn't be taking what it says at face value. The idea in theory of let's say liking the look of this chair and for the pin to be able to not just tell you what it is, but also save that answer to your notes is appealing. But when you actually try and do that, you realize what the limitations of this form factor are. Like you can't see exactly what it's seeing. So I asked this exact question to it about the chair and it gave me a recommendation. But then I later realized that the recommendation it gave me was a different chair in the room. And that's because when it gives you an answer, you have no way of affirming that it's the correct answer. Unlike when you do the same thing using Google Lens on your phone, where you can make sure that you're capturing the right chair and then you can physically check that it has identified correctly. One thing that Imran talked about was the incoming ability to buy things using this. But given that there's no real screen here, would you want to buy things on this? Like what if I meant to order two of something, but the AI pin mishears me and takes that as 20? What if it misunderstands the size or the color of what you're wanting and actually orders an alternative variant? There is so much that could go wrong that you'd really want to see an entire purchase page with all the info and you can only do that on your phone. But then also, you have to talk to it. Because there is no physical screen to type on, your key input method has to default to speech. And there are a lot of times I can think of where I would not want to do that. Like what if you're in an art gallery or a library or more commonly for people, a meeting? What if you're texting with your partner and you don't want to broadcast your intimate conversations? Any search request that might be remotely private, you either tell the world or you'll have to get out your phone anyway. And you have the same problem in a loud environment, like a concert or a busy train. I can tell you for a fact that in the London Underground, this will not be able to hear me clearly unless I shout. So now it is starting to become a pretty big problem. If the fact that the pin will cost you just as much as a top-end flagship smartphone wasn't enough, can you see this growing number of further hoops that you still have to jump through? Like having a permanent required internet connection, the sheer time lag between when you ask it to do something and it actually doing that thing, that full five to 10 second period where you're unsure whether it's thinking or it's failed, the answer to which is a pretty even 50-50 split, and then the further restriction that comes from there being many different environments in which you either can't or you won't want to use it. And that is not even talking about what I think is the biggest limiting factor, the app situation. It's pretty clear that one of the key pitches of this AI pin is the ability to lead this appless lifestyle, to not be a slave to all these apps that are fighting for your attention and to kind of bring all of these separate, previously siloed functionalities into one seamless experience. And I really do want to say, 
I respect the vision. I love the idea of being completely connected, whilst also not needing to bend over so that Meta can track my behaviours and target ads at me accordingly. So, salute for trying. But given how entrenched we already are in these applications, I think this vision only works if this device can still, on some level, still communicate with those apps. Like if I can say to it, hey, send a WhatsApp message that says this, or post a tweet that says this. But it can't do that. When you message someone, it's not a WhatsApp, it's not an iMessage, it's just a straight SMS message. When you take a photo, you know I was saying that when you move your hand back, it gives you this option to share that photo. Yeah, well, since there's no Apple AirDrop and there's no Android Quick Share, the only way to actually share it is to SMS that person a link to be able to download it. Like, imagine after a party, you know when people say, oh, can you send us the photos you took? And then you actually send them an SMS link for them to be able to download those photos, one photo at a time at the Humane Web Center, they're gonna think you're some sort of time traveler. And not in a good way. Oh yeah, so the Humane Web Center. This is where all the stuff on your AI pin gets backed up to every time that it's docked and it's on Wi-Fi. And in a way, this is kind of cool. The company's saying that you get unlimited storage as part of your subscription cost. And this web center is one place where all of your photos, your videos, your notes, all the requests that you've asked it for, it all comes together. But does that also defeat the entire purpose? Like, okay, if the goal of the pin is for you to rely less on apps, but at the same time they're telling you that it's not designed to replace your phone, then you're still going to be using all your phone apps, your Google Drives, your Evernotes, and you're still going to need to keep paying those subscriptions. But now you have a whole extra suite of humane apps that your stuff is further scattered across. If this pin came out before the first smartphone, then who knows, maybe it could have set the precedent for a new type of computer with a new way of working. But we are in a world now that is built around the smartphone. And given that, I do not see a world where a smart device that doesn't actually connect in with any of your existing smart devices is useful. As it stands, it seems like the only smartphone style app that currently works on the pin is Tidal for music. And I can see why it's so limited, because, I mean, both on the developer end, because there's very little incentive to create apps for a platform in which you cannot easily advertise and you cannot easily convert people to your other services, but also for the user. I mean, think about the apps you use. How many of them would actually be useful if you didn't have a screen? Like, you wouldn't want shopping apps. You'd miss so much of the context of what you're looking at. Like when you're on Amazon, for example, you need to see how many reviews there are. You need to see what those reviews say, maybe scan a few of them. You want to be able to see the options for delivery date, and importantly, if you're being charged to get it faster. By losing almost your entire sense of sight, you lose 90% of the information that you require to do useful things. And sure, you can ask the pin to dictate the entire web page, but that would be exhausting and so much slower. The company's currently working on Google Calendar integration. So you'll be able to ask your pin, who's in my next meeting? What time does it start? How long does it go on for? But if you actually want a clear, instant picture of not just your next meeting, but your entire day, the app on your phone can give you everything together in seconds. The same is true for all your social media apps. It's true for any kind of banking. It's true for any form of visual media. And the list goes on. And just to clarify, yes, you do have a display of sorts here this whole laser thing, but the inherent nature of what it is, it naturally limits what it can do. It's monochrome, it's quite low resolution, and also it's not that bright. To the point where outdoors, it's really hard to see, and the official advice is actually to just use your other hand to cup it. Cool. Thanks. And actually, now we really think about it, is it even fair to say this counts as hands-free? Like, yes, technically there is nothing in my hands, but at the same time my hands are definitely not free. Actually, quite the opposite. The laser does not re-aim itself to wherever your hand is. There is a specific spot where it fires. You need to hold your hand there, and you need to keep it as flat as possible. Your hand is basically your projector screen, so the more creased you keep it, the worse your picture quality is gonna be. I genuinely feel like doing this for five minutes is actually, ironically, much less comfortable than just holding your phone. Because you can hold your phone at any position. You can support it on your lap or on a table, and you can just keep moving it. And yeah, the Humane Pin does have a surprising number of features considering there is no physical hardware, like being able to react to messages with emojis. But then at that point, where you're holding your hand out, you're scrolling around and you're tapping multiple times, surely there comes a point where it will actually just be faster to take your phone out and do it there. And that brings me on to the gestures. You know things like rolling your hand around? I totally believe that they are things that you will get used to. Like, I don't think it's fair to say that they're just not good after having used them once. And also, I totally get that you're not going to be using your hand screen as much as you would be using your phone screen. But 
What you can't deny is that the total amount of effort required to perform any given action is just higher with the pin. Like, if you think about what it takes to hover over something with your phone, it's this. If you think about what it takes to hover over something on the Humane pin, it's this. If you think about what it takes to click something, it's that. If you think about what it takes to click something over here, it's that. If you think about what it takes to go home, one swipe. If you think about what it takes to go home, it's a full clench. Now, why do I keep comparing it to the phone anyways? We've already established that it's designed to be a separate device that isn't replacing your phone. Well, because I don't think I've ever seen more overlap in capability between two separate categories of computer. Because look, this is an Android phone. The Humane AI pin, at its very core, is also running Android. This phone has a Qualcomm chipset on the inside. The Humane pin also has a Qualcomm chip on the inside. They didn't exactly say which, but based on the size of this thing and the tiny batteries, I'd say it's very likely to not be close to the power of your phone's chip. This is trying to be your camera, but your phone already has a camera, which doesn't have the limitations of the pins like only having one angle, being limited to 13 megapixel, and only being able to take 15 second 1080p videos. And then to top the whole thing off, all the features, every single thing that the Humane AI pin can currently do, and everything that it will ever be able to do. All the translation features, all the AI features, and the ability to ask it questions, and it remember stuff, all the vision things. Like how they demoed that you can put a Walkman in front of it and ask it what year it was made. You can put a shoe in front of it and ask it who designed it. Your smartphone can also do all of it. Because fundamentally, the Humane pin is just phone hardware, with a fancy new way to interact with it to try and counter the fact that there is no physical display. The one and the only advantage of it, what you're essentially paying that additional $700 plus monthly subscription, and having to juggle battery boosters and keep yet another device charged up for, is that your Humane AI pin sits on your chest. Your phone does not. It's just the fact that it's there. Now here's how it would make a lot more sense to me. You're already paying every month for a data plan on your phone, right? You've already paid a big chunk of upfront cash for the massive processing power on your phone. So surely, surely a much more useful pin would be a pin that, instead of duplicating all of that but just doing it worse, can connect to your phone and use what you already have. I mean, that's exactly how smartwatches already work. And it would mean the pin would be way cheaper, its subscription costs would be minimal because you'd only need to pay for the AI side of things and not the data again, and all your stuff is in one place. Like when you take a photo on your pin, you can rest easy knowing that it'll appear in your phone album and it'll sync with your iCloud or whatever. And it could actually be more capable because it would be able to take advantage of the greater power and the apps that most likely any flagship phone released in the last two to three years already has. Now, I wouldn't go as far as to say that this type of product will have no use for anyone ever, and I'm quite happy to try using it in the long term to see if that changes my mind. But this is just me out here telling you that I'm not hopeful. Unless, of course, Google comes in and acquires the company and then integrates them properly into Android. That might be interesting.